Hi, everyone. It's Lisa Ling. Hope you all are doing well. Um, I am so excited today on behalf of Gold House and Facebook's Gold Talks to be in conversation with the director and producer of an absolutely beautiful film called Hidden Letters. Her name is Violet Fang. Uh, Violet, so great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's my tremendous honor to talk to you, Lisa. Violet, just tell us what your film Hidden Letters is about. Um, I don't. I. I want to. I want to give you that opportunity to <laughs> tell everyone what it's about because I was just so so incredibly moved by it. Um, Hidden Letters is a featureless documentary um, that started a story from 400 years ago in feudal society in China when women had bound feet, locked in the chamber room, and deprived rights of education. They decided to create their own language by writing poems and songs to give each other um, hope and dignity. And throughout you know, these hundreds of years, the language got pre uh, prevailed and survived from generation to generation. My film is to follow the youngest millennial generation who is trying to revive the language, but in the still revived patriarchal society in China, while using this language as a torch to navigate their own life um, in this patriarchal world. Um, without knowing that the language itself is being commercialized and also um, taken over a lot of times by men and trying to co-opt it um, in a way to teach women how to behave around men. I was so um, astounded, fascinated by the fact that hundreds of years ago, these women um, during feudal times created this language that only they knew, this secret of language, um, and expressed that language in the fo form of poems and songs uh, to be able to lament their conditions. And so many of these poems and songs that you weave throughout your film, um, they're heartbreaking. Um, they are, they, they, they give, a such a window into what women of that era were experiencing. How did you learn about Nushu? Where did you find out about it? Um, so I learned about it about 17 years ago by reading the novel from Lisa C called Snowflower and the Secret Fan. And I was absolutely blown away by that novel, um, which is based on Yushu. And remembering thinking to myself that as a Chinese woman born and raised there, how come I didn't know this? How come this is not part of the history that I should be learning from school? So I felt embarrassed when reading uh, this book. Um, but fast forward 15 years later, I moved back to China um, and I got married and had a daughter and I started to really experiencing women's experiences, you know, um, in, in the new kind of society, which is kind of very different from how I grew up from. So I, I felt there's a lot of new suppressions. There's a lot of new confinement uh, for me personally, and I really need a place to talk about it. So I was thinking if there's a way that I can tie an issue with what women's experience are today, then that's a film I want to make. Well, that's what was so special about it. I watched this film with my nine-year-old daughter. Oh. And I think that if it were just a film about this ancient language, frankly, she would have been bored by it. But what you so brilliantly did was you drew these parallels to the status of women in China today and 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 that combination of what you did was absolutely breathtaking and riveting um oh thank you and and I, you know getting back to the new shoe itself many of these women because they were so marginalized in society they probably didn't even know how to read and write yet they created this language that only they knew how to interpret. Is that is that fair to say? Yep, absolutely. And I think that, you know, back then, Nushu was their survival tools, basically. I mean, it's really, it means that life or death for, for these women. And because they have this outlet, it, it allowed them to, to not only survive, but also thrive. But, you know, like looking at it today, it felt like, it felt more and more like the more, it has changed the more it hasn't changed. And the way that we experience today was the rollback on women's rights globally. And just me feeling 
so personally inspired by what these women created because I mean it's not just that they have this tool for survival but also it takes so much bravery and courage for them just to talk about their sufferings and like looking at it today I felt like it's exactly the same like the more that we become strong on the outside as women the more we actually suppress on the inside of the things that we're dealing with and struggle with and that's what I found the brilliance of wisdom you know that new Shu can give us even today and um yeah, I mean, I was I was also really blown away doing research of all the poems that um, during the phase of developing this film. You know, Violet, Violet, watching this film against the backdrop of what's happening in the world today um, was very emotional for me. You know, on the one hand, here I am watching this film about this form of rebellion um, for these women centuries ago and then you see these women who are leading this revolution in Iran, who are Absolutely. risking their lives um, for the ability to experience and, and have freedom. Um, and so even though this language was created so long ago, it is so resonant and relevant to what is happening in our world today. Um, here in America, as our own rights are being scaled back and challenged and threatened, um, and 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 looking at how women in China today feel like they don't have the same kinds of rights as their male counterparts, and even watching how so many men are trying to take Nushu, this this ancient language, and commercialize it, trying to make money off of it without really understanding or really feeling um, the reason why this language was birthed. And I, I love how you follow these two millennial women who become fascinated after learning about Nushu and, 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 and this ancient language in some ways unlocked this door for them that led to a kind of transformation a realization and even I would argue like a liberation for them. One of the women even breaks up with her fiance <laughs> because she started to feel um, inhibited by what he wanted for her. Like she was being stifled by what he wanted and the expectations that he had for her. Absolutely. And I think that oh, I, it just gave me goosebumps how much you understood the film. <laughs> and thank you so much. Because when I started making this film, I know that the context and all, all the settings is in China. But I know that, you know, I was really hoping this film can connect to women throughout the world. Because, I mean, the, one of the other legacy from Yushu is is sisterhood and sisterhood should be global. And that's why when I heard a story about those women in Iran, you know, what's going on in the US, you know, those three words, woman, life, freedom, would just get me teared up every single time because we're all in this together. And to have this intentional space for women to create our own sisterhood and to, to be with ourselves and then to find strength and be proud of who we are is absolutely still necessary today. Um, you know, so when I saw my both of my characters in the film um, transform because of the sisterhood they had um, in their lives and because of the legacy they're trying to take over from Yushu, it just it, it was so satisfying um, at the end when, when I follow their journey. I mean, Violet, it was just so moving to see um, how Nushu just really um, began to um, again, it just like it, it unlocked this thing in them that drove them to not only want to unearth the history, um, but it 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 propelled change in their own lives. Like they made Absolutely. decisions in their own lives that were were motivated by their learning about the courage of these women who dared to create this secret language to be able to communicate and express their grievances about their lot in life. 
Absolutely. It's and so that's why I, that's why that I, you know, I'm hoping that this film, like every woman can take new shoe in their heart. And that's all it that matters. If we can have that in our heart, we'll be stronger as person and we'll be more honest with ourselves and we'll be okay wherever they are, uh, wherever we are. See, that was the difference between the men and the women, right? The men who learned about it, they they tried to commercialize it. In fact, you know, I one of the men uh, wanted to uh, brand like Nushu potatoes. <laughs> Uh, and and uh, and branded alongside like KFC, whereas the women, you know, it struck them in their heart. You know, it was something they began to really carry in their heart, and you could see their frustration as these men were just thinking about the dollar signs um, and 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 wanting to capitalize and commercialize this this ancient language. And I mean that 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 applies to so many things these days yeah. in culture right it's all about consumption and consume con, uh, 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 consumerization um but what do you think Nushu like what do you think it's it's legacy means for women today I think actually that's why I intentionally chose three poems in the film as chapter heading um to go along with the journey of these two amazing women that I'm um, as my main characters. The three poems are what I take as the essence of Nushu. The first one is about being able to share um, their sufferings and being vulnerable with each other. Um, that's one. And then the second one is to be able to build a sisterhood, an intentional space for women to share and to elevate each other and to support each other. And the third is to rebuild the resilience and the strengths that from our within. So that I think is this three strong elements of Nishu. And Violet, how many people actually know the language alive today? Are there any people? I mean, you have this kind of, I, I, I was sort of referring to her as sort of the OG because she was a little girl um and i think her 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 grandmother um was someone who spoke and wrote the language but are there people who understand the language can read the language can 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 write it today yeah so he yanxin is the last living master who learned you organically and period i mean she is the the last one um but there are six nationally certified neutral practitioners that's still alive today and the youngest one is actually Hu Xing, who's my main character but i say that for those who are not certified probably in less than 100 i would say or something i'm just taking a guess because it's really hard to calculate who knows neutral, who doesn't. But at the same time, even if you know how to write the characters, doesn't mean you can practice and you can write poems. Um, and you will be able to um, create new writings about neutral. So so I, I think that in that rigid sense of those who can still practice this language, it's maybe 10, 15. <laughs> Are there efforts underway to really protect the language. I mean, so much of what is happening seems to be this, this attempt to, to commercialize it, but are there attempts to really protect it? I feel like the pure intent to protect it in China is hard to be found um, because a lot of it is kind of coupled with the commercialization. And it's, you know, a lot of people do think that if you don't make that move, then it's going to die out, which is probably true. But the government does make an effort with very little budget of every year in the summer that they provide a free workshop for anybody who wants to come and learn it. It's just, it's only like a week long workshop and then people from outside of the area won't able to read or write this language and understand because the language is based on the local dialect. So it's really hard for them to learn anyways. And for a week, you pretty much might learn a few characters and learn a few songs, but that's it. So like you can't really, um, like it, that doesn't really translate to really preserving uh, the language on the larger scale. And and what happened to Nushu um, 
after it was sort of being used by these women. And do you know about how many women actually spoke it and wrote it? Do you have any idea? In the, in when it was in the um, yes, feudal society, yeah. I think that it was, you know, around the surrounding 10 villages. So at its peak, maybe around like a thousand, two thousand women who were able to practice it. Because I mean, like these women, when they got married by arranged marriage, they will be sent off to a different village, um, which is, you know, back then there's no transportation. So these women is, you know, impossible to go back and forth, but they will take the Yushu, uh, language into their new village. Um, so, and then that's how it got spread it. How can we, other than watching your beautiful film, how can we learn more about it? And how can we go on to continue carrying Nushu in our heart? Because some of the men that you feature say that Nushu can't survive unless it's commercialized. What do you think about that notion? Um, and, and what can we do to, to you know, carry it in our hearts? I, I think that you know the language itself, the function of the language is no longer there. So it is going to die out and I have no doubt about it, but I don't think that's the point. The point is that how we can carry the legacy of it. And that's what I'm saying by watching this film and reading about Nushu, reading the poetries. Um, I think there's a re regain of, of the legacy in every one of our heart. And that's what it matters. Um, but for, for people who wanted to learn more about Nushu, they can Google it. And then they can also go on Amazon. There are books of uh, poetry that people um, saved from the old days um, that people can read about. Um, but we also, along with the film, we have initiated our impact campaign. So everyone can participate in our impact campaign by coming to our uh, monthly Instagram live series, which each month we, we feature one female artist who use their different kind of form of art to elevate other women and to, to share their suppressions um, and to empower themselves. So every month we feature a different artists but along with that we're also opening calls to all women doesn't matter if you're artists or not to be able to create um, artwork to express yourself and so that we can impact each other and elevate each other and at the end of uh, the open call which is March 15th next year we're going to have a virtual gallery um, that everybody can access on their phone using AI and that virtual gallery will be able to elevate all of us in this as a global sisterhood. It's a great point, Violet. It's 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 not so much about knowing how to speak the language. It's about carrying the idea, right, of this um, tightly held secret with us. I mean, it's Absolutely. really, um, you know, these these poems, and again, like this idea, can really become a mantra for all of us. And and again, these parallels that you draw between the status of women centuries ago and, and what's happening now. I mean, that that scene in the princess camp in China where little girls were going to, they, they go to learn how to be princesses and be, you know, suitable um, wives one day for their husbands. I mean, it's just like the, the parallels are eerie almost. Yes. Yeah, because I actually think that it, it's it's together with the the countrywide revival of traditional culture in a way that and then women's you know traditional virtual is part of that culture that's you know being revived. But I was also you know looking at that that scene. I was also thinking that you know isn't it the global rollback also everywhere? You know, like it's not just in China of how women if we don't keep fighting things can just go backwards. And this is, you know, that scene very much shows that. Yeah, I mean, in so many ways, again, this idea of Nushu really, I think in some ways is kind of inciting. And, and as, you know, your two protagonists are going and, and trying to kind of spread the message of Nushu, um, just given this climate, it has the potential to kind of ignite this subtle revolution in some ways, you know, if enough, enough women and even men start to really feel what Nushu represents and what it represented for those women, you know, this, this 
this expression, this artistry um, that was grounded in, um, you know, this this sorrow and darkness, but that 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 brought them together. It's just so powerful, Violet. Thank you so much. And I, you know, like I, I think that making movies is about connecting people. Uh, of their heart and then you know once we feel connected then we can talk about how we can use that emotions to create changes and and i'm so glad that you know it it connect with you well i will tell you that this is a film that is going to stick with me for a long time uh, especially given everything that's happening um, in the world right now and and you know these revolutions that women are leading but also um, the 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 attack on women all over the world right now. Um, how can people find the film? How can we support the film? So we are going to have a theatrical release nationally from December 9th. Um, the cities we're opening are New York, LA, San Francisco, um, Honolulu, and Boulder for now, and then also in the UK from December 2nd. And we're also going to um, make the film available on TVOD from December 23rd. So people can just go to our website at hiddenlettersfilm.com for ticket information. Well, Violet, I, I wanna congratulate you on making this, um, this extraordinary film. I wish you so much success. And for those who are watching, I, I really, um, I can't encourage you more strongly, especially if you're a woman and you have daughters, uh, to see this film because, again, it's something that I, I, I am sure will stay with you. Um, and during this time, I, I can't think of anything that um, could become a better sort of driver and mantra um, for these times, even though this language was created um and expressed hundreds of years ago so please go out and see it and support hidden letters thank you so much lisa